Yes, I haven't shaven in two weeks. I just had a newborn, but it's too important and I have to do an update. My name is Nicola Pino. I'm the author of this book called The Non Tinfoil Guide to EMFs. And I'm an investigative health journalist and expert, or so they say, about electromagnetic fields and what they do to the human body. And in this series uh, on my YouTube channel, what I want to do is to give you an update about the current state of research around EMS because, yes, most people think it's complete tinfoil. And I've been reading an, uh, an article and listening to a podcast, a paleo podcast, just yesterday that totally got my blood boiling. And it seems that the, the authors, uh, one of them being... Um, and not not to pick on on her at all. It's just that she was misinformed on creating this article. Uh, Dr. Sarah Ballantyne, PhD, uh, basically concluded you shouldn't worry about it. Um, there's no evidence. It's inconclusive, and uh, well, the data doesn't support the idea that you should turn off your Wi-Fi at night. And unfortunately, well, that's not true. It, it not nothing. Most things that she shared are not true. So let me share my screen for a second. And we'll, everything is ghetto right now, as you can see. No theme, nothing fancy here. I just want to show you the science, and then in the comments, uh, let me know your thoughts. Because uh, if if I'm mistaken and I'm just making uh, making stuff up here, I want to be the first to know because. I just want to point out that it doesn't make sense saying these things that EMS are not an issue and that you can literally be, be on your cell phone all day and that um, Wi-Fi isn't a problem because y you'll see. So if you look at the blog that she did uh, on paleomom.com, basically she concludes that, well, you know, you know, EMFs, they're, uh, they're a class 2B carcinogen. Let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, so what she says is the World Health Organization, which is true, is, is determined in 2011 that EMFs are a class 2B carcinogen, radio frequency EMFs. So that's Wi-Fi, cell phones, and Bluetooth, right? And she says, well, it's... It's a um, it's a possible carcinogen. Doesn't mean a thing. And uh, you you have uh, aloe vera extract, golden seal root powder, and pickle vegetable in the same category. She's right. She's right. So it doesn't mean a lot, but it means something, right? The problem I have with that is that uh, it's been since 2011, right? So as I'm recording this, we're May 2018 now, seven years later. And basically what Leonard Hardell says, who's been on the committee back in 2011, he says that basically uh, nothing has changed, even though uh, further, further studies have strengthened the, the, the association. In fact, Hardell, who's a researcher who first identified the fact that Agent Orange was a carcinogen back um, after the Vietnam War. That's, that's him. That's, he's a high-level guy who's, who's been doing epidemiology for his entire career, has said that it should be reclassified as a class one definite carcinogen. And he's not alone. You've got Darius Lysinski. You've got several other researchers. In fact, I have identified in the, in the document that most people who were on this decision in a committee now think that it should be increased uh, or they have some sort of conflict of interest. Darius Lysinski think it should be 2A. Uh, you've got uh, Igor Belayev. You've got Leonard Hardell. You've got Ronald Melnick. A lot of these guys seem like they don't think that class 2B is the right classification. So saying class 2B is an issue is all right, I guess, but when you look at researchers who were on the committee to determine this is class 2B, they pretty much, well, not all of them, but a majority uh, or let's say some of them think it should be 2A and 1 and the other ones don't uh, state their opinion. So it's concerning to me because it looks like it's going to take just a, a few more years and then it's going to be 2A and then 1. So it turns out that right now doing nothing about EMS based on the fact that it's only 2B, it seems like folly to me. Okay, point number two that I want to make, the NTP study. Uh, if you didn't hear about it, uh, Google it, NTP study. This is the EH Trust, Environmental Health Trust website here. Um, 
basically what they said, the invested, the U.S. government uh, was mandated or the, the NTP program, National Toxicology Program, was mandated um, by the FDA originally in the 90s, at the end of the 90s, to find for sure uh, or to prove without the shadow of a doubt that cell phones do not cause cancer. Unfortunately, the opposite was found. And um, in 2016, they uh, launched or they, they, um, they published the NTP group, um, the pre, let's say the preliminary uh, reports of what they found, which is increase in heart schwannomas and in, um, and in other types of uh, cancers like cancer of the brain, different parts, uh, and also different tumors in the nervous system and different places in the rat's body. And this is at levels that are just uh, that are non-thermal, and that's very, very, very important if you read my book. Um, and I won't go into that, but basically what I want to say is that in the article, um, uh, Dr. Ballantyne talks about the fact that, yes, the there's been a rat study, uh, the NTP study, um, that, that, that goes and that, that explains these things. However, it's not valid because it's been people say, well, the exposure doesn't, doesn't make sense and rats and that, that's not true. Unfortunately, it's, it's so, it's so not true that, um, the, the, um, there's been a, a peer review process in last April in which the peer review group has said they voted to strengthen the conclusions that cell phone radiation caused health effects in the cell phone, uh, and basically caused health effects in the rats that were exposed to cell phone radiation. Um, and they said there's a clear evidence of cancer. It's, 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 it's almost, it should be class one carcinogen based on the NTP uh, study, it looks like. So let's look at, in science, you, you want to reproduce things. Uh, so the, the Collegium Ramazzini from uh, Italy that, is, uh, uh, that's, that has 180 independent international scientists from 30 countries, well, they found the same thing. So right after the NTP, the partial results from the Remazzini uh, uh, Institute were published. And uh, Fiorella Belpoghi, who's the research director, said it reinforces the results of the NTP study. So a, another huge rat study for years that shows that EMFs are a carcinogen, probably class one, maybe class 2A, which is probable. That's not good. That's not, we're not, we're not talking about pickled vegetables now. We're, so <laughs> it's saying that it's to be again, it's pretty stupid to me. Um, then there's the phone gate that happened. Uh, Marc Azarvi from France um, had last year um, started something called the phone gate. So basically he found out that the, fre the, the National Frequency Agency of Friends, the NFA, uh, ANFR, found out that nine out of 10 phones exceeded the European standards for SAR. The standard, the, the, um, the SAR is the absorption rate of radiation, specific absorption rate, sorry. So uh, Mark Arazi, sorry, I butchered his name. Uh, he's a journalist who found that, and it turns out that what happened right after that is that the telecom operator Orange recalls 90,000 uh, of these phones, the Happy uh, HAPI 30, 90,000 phones, but this is only a fraction of the phones that should be recalled because they don't make sense. In fact, some phones were, when they, they are really tested on the body or on the ear, the way it's actually used, uh, sometimes it goes, I got to find a number, it's ridiculous. It's, it's a SAR that can, go, uh, that can go up to like in the, let's say, oh my God, I got to find the numbers. Um, so, oh, there you go. 89% we're at a SAR greater than the maximum limit value that's a European standard of two watts per kilogram and 25% as at four watts per kilogram. That's double the limit. So 
every, basically every cell phone fails the safety testing with regulations that are freaking loose and that have nothing to do with human health. So I'm concerned again. So can you still trust cell phone manufacturers, still trust the class 2B and say it's a non-issue? I, I don't think it's reasonable to say that. Then I want to point out something that I shared on the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast when I interviewed me uh, a few months back. It's one study from um, the, you know, in India, they think it's an issue. In India, you have uh, people from the government that say they're going to change things. It's, it's really another planet out there when it comes to EMFs. They think it's an issue. And in fact, uh, they've dismantled thousands of cell phone towers from urban areas in the, um, the largest region of India. I don't have the link, but you can Google it up. Uh, this study is 2013, impacts of radio frequency EMFs from cell phone towers and wireless devices on biosystem and ecosystem. What does that mean? Well, the effects of EMFs on nature. And that's a review. That's a review of hundreds of different um, studies on, okay, can EMFs, can cell phone towers affect living things outside humans? So animals, plants, bees, uh, whatever, uh, birds, right? So if you scroll down below, let me, let me show you the, 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 the overall findings on, on the effects on, uh, in fact, it, 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 uh, it does include humans. Well, you have 919 research papers and basically you have 593 that do show impact. So they say, okay, what do we find? What are these impacts on biology of living things, including humans? And this is a review of hundreds of studies, right? This, this is scientific uh, method at, 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 at its best. Okay, let's, let's look at what did they say. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. So, based on current available literature, it is justified to conclude that EMFs, RF EMFs, that cell phone towers, cell phones, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, radiation exposure can change neurotransmitter functions, blood-brain barrier, morphology, electrophysiology, cellular metabolism, calcium efflux. That's uh, basically how much calcium goes out of the cell, and it's, uh, it's a marker of stress in plants. And gene and protein expression in certain types of cell, even at lower intensities. So let me ask you this, if you're, if you're skeptical, if, if you say there's no way that non-ionizing radiation, that's the type of radiation that comes out your cell phone, your, your Wi-Fi router, uh, the, the cell phone tower, the ambient electrosmog in a city, if you say to me that it does nothing, how do you explain 500 and, what is it, 593 studies that do show an effect on nature? and humans, and frogs, and bees, and it does not make scientific sense to say nothing is happening. It is ludicrous to say that. All right, let me talk about EHS, electrosensitivity. That's another thing in the article from Dr. Ballantyne. Again, I don't want to bash on it. Dr. Ballantyne, if you're listening to that, um, I, I, I know that you're doing your homework. It's just that the topic is so charged it took me years to really understand the whole picture, and I put it in this book. It's not just a pick, pitch for the book. It's, I cannot explain everything in a few minutes. It's in the book. So reliable disease biomarkers. Uh, Dr. Dominic Balpom from France is one man that, is, that has found consistent biomarkers that do show that EHS, electrohypersensitivity, a kind of, if you say a cell phone or Wi-Fi um, allergy is real. And he finds certain, uh, certain markers that are elevated in, or, or, or lowered in patients. You can read it up. Type Dominic Balpam and read it up. Now I'll talk about the mechanisms. Dr. Martin Paul, P-A-L-L, -L, he published his latest uh, paper, 2018 July, Environmental Research. Um, that's a free release. Wi-Fi is an important threat to human health. That's serious stuff. And he explains that the way Wi-Fi or other EMS work is by activating the voltage-gated calcium channels in cells. What does that mean? Is that when you have a signal coming into your body, your cell senses it 
And that's a foreign type of electricity. And basically it opens up the calcium channels and it allows too much calcium to flow in, which in the end causes apoptosis and oxidative stress and other effects that we're seeing. Then the last thing I want to say, the eighth thing is um, she, Dr. Ballantyne talked about the fact that, well, there's no link with uh, sperm damage. It's, 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 uh, it's not uh, consistent in science. So this is a screenshot from my book, The non Info Guide to EMFs. And you see the year of publication and the, the amount of studies that look at. These are meta-analyses, uh, each looking at mobile phone exposure and sperm damage. You see that when you have all these studies, there's 201 studies uh, across six different meta-analyses that each demonstrate in the last nine years alone that EMFs from cell phone and Wi-Fi will damage sperm. It will reduce fertility so much that even the Cleveland Clinic top urologist, so Cleveland Clinic, I'm on their website. If you scroll down, you look at cell phones, Dr. Saban, Sabaneg says, we've, got, we've done a lot of research on cell phones. In studies where we directly expose sperm to cell phone radiation, it did damage the sperm. So you should not keep a cell phone in your pocket, period. This is, this is science. This is not me being overdramatic or alarmist. So this is it. This, the topic is still not tinfoil. It looks like people that are still skeptical that EMS are doing anything to the human body don't have a lot of arguments anymore. And the more research that comes out, the more this information will go public. And I invite you, if you were skeptical and you find something completely flawed in everything I talked about and everything you think it's, it's an issue, please share. I want to know what's your stance on this. If you have people in, in, in your entourage that are skeptical, send them to this video. It's a discussion. I don't want to make it sound that I'm smarter than, than other people. I'm just pointing out that things don't add up here. The, the, the real science, governments, WHO, researchers, independent scientists, people that are way smarter than me are each saying that it is an issue. So when I see an article published saying, oh no, it's an internet thing, it's, it's a non-issue, you should not turn off Wi-Fi at night, I just don't agree. And, and I think that this is um, uh, someone who's been misled by the industry and by people that want to debunk the topic. Because yes, it sounds crazy at first, which is why I call this book The non tinfoil Guide to EMS. I did not call it like, oh, obviously people think EMFs are a problem. So this is Nicola Pino signing out. Um, check out my book, non tinfoil Guide to EMFs. If you love this content, please share it. And uh, I'll show you for next time. All right. See you guys.